In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the tree-level differential scattering cross-section for molar scattering as described by scalar quantum electrodynamics. It's a pretty quick and straightforward calculation, but it's got a satisfying result. So let's jump straight into the math section. Scalar quantum electrodynamics given by this Lagrangian is the scalar generalization of standard quantum electrodynamics. If you are unfamiliar with how this theory is constructed and quantized, I recommend you to my An Introduction to Scalar QED video. There's a a link to it in the description. In my Scalar QED introduction video, I discuss the standard Feynman rules for Scalar QED. Those standard Feynman rules are given in this table here. We can look at the vertex function section of this table, these two entries here, to see what kind of interactions are possible. Given those two possible interactions, the following diagrams give the complete tree-level contribution to molar scattering in Scalar QED. These two, they're the ones that you remember from standard QED. In the case of molar scattering, this extra interaction that shows up in scalar QED doesn't actually yield an additional Feynman diagram. With these Feynman diagrams and rules, we can write out the Feynman amplitude quite easily. We simply get this. We can apply four momentum conservation to simplify this down as much as we can without selecting a parameterization for the momentum four vectors. Doing that is pretty trivial and it yields this result. With the Feynman amplitude worked out, we can move on to computing the differential scattering cross-section from it. I derived the standard formula for doing that in a previous video. There's a link in the description to that video. The relevant formula is this one. I have used parentheses after the d sigma right there to indicate which differentials the specific cross-section depends on. As we make this formula specific to the problem and then integrate over some of the differentials, exactly which differentials are left will change, and if we just call all of them d sigma, it looks like we're setting inequal quantities equal to each other. If we plug in the momenta that are actually relevant to the problem into this, the formula simplifies down to that. The desired cross-section is with respect to only the solid angle of one of the outgoing scalar three momentum vectors. I chose p1 prime. Thus, the other four of the six integration variables must be integrated over. Now, the process of doing that integration is something that I've done repeatedly in multiple different differential scattering cross-section videos that I've done on my channel that many of you have probably already seen. And while I've written out the whole calculation in as much detail as I did there, I'm not going to verbally go through the integration process. I'm going to scroll through it slowly and give you a summary. Basically what we do is we use the mechanical momentum conservation delta functions to integrate over these mechanical momentum variables, leaving us with this, and then we switch to spherical coordinates to reveal the solid angle differential that we want, and then we integrate over this momentum magnitude using the energy conservation delta function, and that follows the same procedure I've shown you many times. But at the end of all those integration calculations, what we get for the differential scattering cross-section with respect to the solid angle with all the other variables integrated out is this. Then we can transition to the center of mass frame, which I've abbreviated the CM frame here, which allows us to simplify the formula even further, getting us to this. We can then simplify this formula further by selecting a parameterization that recognizes that we have selected the center of mass frame and the fact that both scalar particles have the same mass. This is the standard parameterization, and it's the one that's used for the standard QED molar formula, which I've derived in a separate video, to which there's also a link in the description. If we plug this parameterization into this formula here, it simplifies down to this ridiculously simple thing. We can complete this calculation by taking the modulus squared of the Feynman amplitude from the last section, inserting the same parameterization as simplifying, and inserting that result into the last differential scattering cross-section formula. This proceeds as follows. First, this is the Feynman amplitude squared, and then we can insert that parameterization in to get this, and then we can start the simplification. Ultimately, I rewrote it like this because I know of these two trig identities which help us simplify it down, and if we insert those, we get here, and then we can simplify it down a little bit more trivially and ultimately get down to this maximally simplified result. We can then plug this into that differential scattering cross-section formula right there that we got, and ultimately we get this final answer, which is the standard usual result for molar scattering in scalar quantum electrodynamics. And it is a pretty little result, isn't it? So now you know how to derive the tree-level differential scattering cross-section for molar scattering. It's really surprisingly easy for a quantum field theory calculation, but the result is no less beautiful, so it's kind of an easy prize. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was educational. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up, and and consider subscribing.